How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to go over the medium design problem called insert delete get random. This problem has been asked at a bunch of tech companies including Amazon, Bloomberg, Facebook, Twitter, and Microsoft. Before I jump into the explanation, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my content. It really helps out the channel. And let's get into it. So for this design problem, we have to implement three different functions. The first function is called insert. This will insert an item val into a set if it is present. If the item is not present, we return true. If it is present, then we return false. The second function is called remove, and exactly how it sounds, we're gonna remove an item val from the set. If the item is present, we return true. If it is not, then we return false. And the last function that we have to implement is called get random. This will return a random element in the current set of elements where each element must have an equal probability of being chosen. And the goal of this problem is to have all of these functions have a time complexity of big O of one, so constant time complexity. Before I jump into the optimized approach, let's go over the brute force. So we can have a set data structure that does the insert and remove in constant time. That's pretty standard. However, when calling get random, since we need each element to have an equal probability, we would have to convert our set to a list, then select an index at random to be chosen. This would make the get random function be big O of n time complexity, where n is the number of elements we have in our set. Converting a set to a list is linear time because we would have to loop over, we'd have to use an iterator over the entire set to add those into the list. So that was the brute force approach. Now let's go over an example of the optimal approach. We're gonna need two different data structures for this optimal approach. The first data structure will be an array list, which is just a resizable array. This list will keep track of all the current elements in our set and select an element at random in constant time. And so I'll talk about more on this in a bit. The second data structure is going to be a hash map, which will map integers to integers, where the keys are going to be the actual values being inserted or removed. And then the value is going to be the index of the value in our list. So now that we know we have to use both of these data structures, let's execute the following instructions from top to bottom. So first we're going to insert one. If we insert one at this stage, our list and our map are completely empty. The value one will get appended to our list and then the map will store a new entry containing one as the key and the value as index zero. So we're left with our list having a value of one in it and our map having an entry of one zero, where zero is the index of that value. In the second instruction, insert two, this would also return true because two is not already in our map yet. So the value two will get appended to our list and then the map will store a new entry containing two as the key and the value as index one. So, so far it's pretty simple. Now let's execute the instruction get random. This can return either one or two since they both should have an equal probability. Since we know the length of our list, we can just use a random number generator between zero inclusive and our list size exclusive. Now as for the next instruction, remove one, this is where it's going to get a little bit more complicated. If we simply remove one from our list, that would be a big O of N operation since all elements to the right of the index we are trying to delete would need to be shifted to the left. We can't just remove the element straight from our list because that won't give us the constant time complexity that we want. So the way we get around this is we swap the element we are trying to delete to the end of our array list. When we delete the very last element in a list, that is a big O of one operation since no elements need to be shifted over. So let's go over this in depth. Right now we're trying to delete the value one. If we look at our list, value one is at index zero. So we're gonna copy the last element in our list to index zero. Our last element is two, so we copy two to index zero, and now we're left with a list of two, two. And now we can just delete the last element 
and we're just left with list of two. But as you can see, we have a discrepancy here. Right now, our value two says it's at index one in our map, but if we look back at our list, we know value two is at index zero. So we have to update that entry. So our two entry will get changed to two zero to reflect the change. So let's remove once more, we're gonna remove the number two. If we look at our list, we don't have anything to swap with since it is the only element in the list. So we can simply just remove two from our list and just be left with it empty. Same thing with our map. Our map only has an entry of two, so we're just going to remove it, and then our map is left empty. And in both of these removals, we return true from the function because both of those values were inside of the map. Removing by far is the hardest part of this design question, but the steps are fairly simple. First, we extract the index of the value that you want to remove. The second step is you get the last element in the list. Then we set the last element value to the index. Fourth, we update the last element's index in our map. We remove the last element in our list. And then finally, we remove the entry containing the key equal to our value in the map. If you want, you can pause the video on these steps to read over them in depth. But for now, let's jump into the code. Okay, so we need to implement this class randomize set. We're gonna implement the insert, remove, and get random functions. So to start things off, let's initialize both of the data structures that we talked about. We're gonna use a map and a list. So we can say private map integer to integer. We could just call it map. And then we're also going to have a list of integers. We'll just call it list. And then we're also going to need a random number generator. So let's initialize that. We'll say private random random. And inside of our constructor, we can initialize all of these data structures. So we'll say list equals new array list. And then random equals new random. So let's implement the insert function first. This function is really easy to implement. So the value coming in, if that value is not in our map already, then we know we're gonna return true. If it is already in our map, then we will return false. So we can say if our map contains the key val, then we're just going to return false. We don't wanna perform any logic because we already have that value set. If we get past this if statement, this is where we need to add the value inside of our map and inside of our list. So we can say map.put key, and then the value is gonna be the index of this value in our list. So we can just say list.size, and then down here, we're gonna say list.addVal, and then just return true. So you can imagine if we were adding in, say, the value number two, the map would store two, zero, because our list size so far is zero. And then when we list.add, it'll add two inside of that list at index zero. Now let's implement the get random function. Once again, this function is really easy to implement. We can say int index equals random.nextInt, and it'll be of list.size. So list.size, this is exclusive. So this will go from zero to our list size minus one. And then all we need to do is say return list.getIndex. So now every single element inside of our list has an equal probability of being chosen. Now let's implement the remove function. So the first thing we need to check is if the value is in the set or not. So we could say if map does not contain the key of value, then we just return false. We're not removing anything. And now we're just gonna perform all of the steps that we talked about. So first we're going to extract the index that we want to remove. So we could say int index equals map.getval. So this, this index we fetch from our map is going to be the index we remove inside of our list. Then we need to extract the very last element in our list. So we could say int last element. We'll say list.get 
list.size minus one. And now we need to overwrite the element at the index with our last element. So I know that may sound confusing. So this will make more sense once I write it out. So we'll say list.set index with our last element. So pretty much the value that's in our list is being overwritten with the very last element. And now we need to update the entry in our map. So we could say map.put last element at index. And now the last two steps is just removing. So we're going to remove the very last element in our list and then remove the entry that has the value. So we could say map dot remove val and then list dot remove list dot size minus one and then finally we just return true so let's make sure the solution works what what the f oh i put it as key this needs to be val so let's submit one more time so our time complexity as we already discussed is going to be big o of one for all of the functions a set adding and removing is constant. And then when we remove from our list, we're always removing the very last element. So no items have to be shifted over. And then as for our space complexity, it's going to be big O of N, where N is the number of elements that we have in our map and our list. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to comment any other problems that you want me to solve, and I will try to get to them. Definitely like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And check out my Patreon if you want to join the private Discord channel. And with that, I will see you guys next time.